What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Supreme Decisions. And tonight, I want to talk to you about something that I say more often than not, and it still seems to be kind of a sticky area for people. And it's in regards to transcripts, because I often tell you to get the transcripts from previous hearings, because you can actually use them as evidence in your upcoming hearings. And the easy is. You cannot argue with yourself. And it's just like the affidavits or the police reports where they're swearing under oath, this is what happened, and then you all of a sudden, you see a video that pops up and it completely contradicts what's being said. This is one of those instances where getting a copy of your transcript is a necessity. Now, I'm going to use in essence the words or the status of those that are indigent but it also applies to those that can get access to their transcripts whether they're indigent or they're paying for them out of their own pockets one of the first supreme court cases is griffin v illinois 351 us 12 1956 indigents are entitled at a public expense to transcripts, portions of the record, or alternative materials necessary to appeal. Now, the thing about using the, using a for appeal, which it was also held, upheld in Draper v. Washington, 1963, also Mayor v. Chicago in 1971. But the importance of these is simply the fact that getting your hands on them allows for things to be brought up such as prosecutorial misconduct or even instances where there are statements being made that were not originally made part of the case or it'll show the things that you see being necessary for creating that reasonable doubt for withdrawing a plea or even using it as a crutch for a perjury lawsuit. I'm going to go into a couple other cases, but these are more generalized because they're, while they're separate, they actually work together. One case is Britt v. North Carolina. In a criminal case, the state must provide an indigent defendant with a transcript of prior proceedings when the transcript is needed for an effective defense or appeal. And this is where I was talking about the separation. The effective defense or appeal. In the first part, I said appeal, but that's only because that's the generalization of having a secondary hearing. But we also know it's great for defense or it also works when you're setting up the lawsuit. Now, it goes on. The burden is on the state to show that a transcript of prior proceedings requested by a indigent defendant is not needed for an effective defense or appeal. So again, if they're going to oppose it, they must prove that the request has nothing to do with your defense or your reopening of a case, a la withdrawing of a plea. And I'm going to go on. Ordinarily, it is assumed that a transcript of a preliminary hearing will be a valuable to a defendant without requiring a show of need tailored to the facts of the particular case. Now, you should be able to get a copy of your transcripts without any other means other than the fact that it's your transcript. That is one of the things I often talk about because even when you're talking about the Freedom of Information Act request, you should be able to get a copy of your records because it does not violate the government and the Sunshine Act. And lastly, what I'm going to lead you with is Griffin v. Illinois one more time. The importance of this case, why it's not the precedent of this sector, it is an important case because it deals almost primarily with the transcript and even forms of payment. And it held that a criminal defendant may not be denied 
the right to appeal due to the inability to pay for a trial transcript. Because again, that's why they use that as a crux in using the words indigent. Just because you can't pay for a transcript does not mean you should not have a copy of it. Now, if a defendant is indigent, he is entitled to appeal without the payment of a filing fee in form of papyrus to a free copy of the reporter's transcript, the verbatim count of the court proceedings, and is entitled to the appointment of counsel to represent him on his appeal. And this is under 18 U.S.C. section 3006A as well as 28 U.S.C. section 753 paragraph G. Understanding the gathering of evidence and the purpose of evidence and making sure you are in a place that you are able to best defend not only yourself but also make sure the police, the judges, the prosecutors are doing the job that they were placed into those positions for because they are all supposed to work towards the benefit of the people. They are all supposed to work along the lines of law. When that doesn't happen, your job is to enforce it to the fullest capacity. Now, as far as transcripts, that's all I got for you tonight. I appreciate everybody. And I actually have two people. One of them is Robin. Keep going, Robin. Appreciate you. And the other one, Melissa. Appreciate both of you. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing. Apple Pay. Venmo. Google Wallet, and as you know, the cash app with all the benefits and the discounts. So if you don't have it, use my link in the description, as well as if you're going to shop online, keep getting discounts with my Amazon store. If it's not on my page, let me know. I'll find it. But go through my store, even do a search in my store for what you're looking for. And I'll make sure I get it for you. And if you don't have Amazon Prime, holla at your boy. I got you too. But until next time.